What's up, everybody? It's me again, Miranda Alcaraz, and we are here back in Vancouver for episode 12 of the More Than Nothing podcast. We're in mid-November, pretty much. Yeah, exactly, actually. It's November 15th right now, and um, it's that season where things can get difficult because life starts to get busy and holidays start happening, and um, I wanted to do a an episode today um, that takes it back to one of my favorite parts of a book that I read a few months ago called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So this episode is not based on a post that I've done. I can't believe I haven't done a post about this specific thing. Um, I definitely will have to here in the next few days. So I'm going to read actually a quote that is directly from the book that he put up just a few days ago actually, and that's probably where it got my head thinking about this and wanted to talk about it on the podcast and kind of my take on it and how I interpret it in my own life and how I think you can take this idea and interpret it into yours regardless of what your goals are. So he says, when scientists analyze people who appear to have tremendous self-control, it turns out those individuals aren't all that different from those who are struggling. Instead, disciplined people are better at structuring their lives in a way that does not require heroic willpower and self-control. In other words, they spend less time in tempting situations. So obviously, working in the fitness industry for 20 years now, um, there's a lot of talk about motivation and willpower and self-control and just will yourself to (laughs) work out or get motivated to eat better or show some self-control when you go to eat at a restaurant or when you're deciding what to have for dinner. And there's so much talk around that and um, encouragement for that. And I understand that message, um, but I really liked this because I know in my own life for the things that I'm successful with and then the things that I personally struggle with that this is so true. So he goes on to say, the people with the best self-control are typically the ones who need to use it the least. It's easier to practice restraint when you don't have to use it very often. So yes, perseverance, grit, and willpower are essential to success, but the way to improve these qualities is not by wishing you were more disciplined, but by creating a more disciplined environment. So I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about how I truly believe that um, it's not because somebody isn't doesn't have goals and they're just they, they don't care enough. I don't believe that it's because people just are lazy in general or that people don't have self-control or discipline. I think most people do have those things. Um, I think it's the environment that we put ourselves in a lot of time that make it um, that we're having to use that self-control and discipline so often. Um, so I kind of wrote down a couple like examples of goals that people have. I try to give you guys examples that are not always just fitness related because, um, a lot of you out there crush the fitness stuff, but it's like, I need to do some other things and improve some other things. And I know that's the case for me. So a couple goals that we can use, for example, are, this is fitness related, but, um, I want to eat better. I want to go to sleep earlier or get more sleep at night. I want to watch less TV or play video games less or spend less time scrolling through social media. Those are all kind of like similar things. Um, I want to drink, drink less. And this is one where I think like the alcohol example of what I'm just about to give um, is very common that we think this way with that, but um, maybe not with the other stuff. Um, or I want to work out more. So those are some examples of goals. So when constructing your environment, I also believe that there are two stages to, to what you're going to need to do. Um, I have a tendency to tell people, and I have done this in the past, like, Hey, don't quit cold Turkey with something that's going to be too hard. And you're going to, you're going to struggle with that. With that said, I think that there can be a time and place for that. I think that, um, for most people, if you tell them just to do something in moderation, something that they're really trying to give up, moderation turns into more often than not. Um, So I think that uh, 
there should be and can be a stage of complete avoidance for people. I think that's where people have success when they do something like the Whole30 program or they do something where they're not gonna have sugar for like 30 days or they're not gonna drink for like two months or they're gonna hold themselves to a really strict bedtime schedule for however long um, or they're not gonna watch TV at all for a month or two. Um, the problem with those is not in the doing of it, it's the lack of plan to of what's gonna happen after the 30 days are up. So you hear a lot of times about people having huge success when they have like that complete avoidance stage but then they don't have a plan for what comes next. So the next phase is then introducing moderation and paying attention to what moderation looks like and having hard and fast rules for, okay, I've now surpassed moderation and it's going further than I wanted it to go to be a part of my life again and I'm slipping back into old habits. But I do think um, that complete avoidance stage is something that's great, especially in the environment that you can control. So when it comes to like eating better, for example, um, I think I've used this person's DM on this podcast before, but I got a DM from one of our members, our street parking members, who's also a friend of mine. And she's like, help, I'm eating all my kids brownies and cookies. Like, what do I do? And I say, said, stop buying your kids brownies and cookies. And she's like, I have no choice. And I'm like, Mm, you're in charge. You do have a choice. So not bringing things into your environment that are going to make it so that you have to um, have so much self-control and restraint. Julian talked about it on one of his posts not too long ago about how the, the when you choose not to buy something, the only time you make that choice is at the grocery store. When you buy it and bring it into your home, now you have to ha make the choice not to eat it every single time you're in your kitchen. And that that's a lot of choices and that's where it's easy when you're tired or just stressed or whatever to slip up. If it's not there, you're going to have to have a real strong pull to go drive to the grocery store, get it, bring it back and eat it. So trying to construct an environment that just doesn't have those things available. Um, when it comes to going to sleep earlier, whatever it is that takes you out of being able to go, to, let's say you want to go to bed at 10 PM, whatever it is you normally do from nine to 10 PM, you need to construct a different bedtime routine where hard and fast, especially during this like first stage of really breaking bad habits of at 9 p.m., no matter what, my TV is off, my phone is off, my computer is off, the lights are dim, whatever, I'm taking a bath, I don't eat anything after that time, um, maybe some quiet music or something like that, no matter what. If I'm on the phone with somebody, 9 p.m. hits, my alarm on my phone goes off, sorry, gotta go, it's 9 p.m. And again, this is not gonna be forever, it's just during that first stage where you really need to break those habits. Um, tell people that you're trying to break these habits too so that they're not bringing stuff in and trying to call you at 9.30 or bringing stuff to your house that you don't wanna eat or offering you things at the office. And obviously, you're not gonna wanna tell everyone because then they'll, you know, there are the people that will give you a hard time about it or they feel crappy about their own decisions. And so they bring that and put that on you. But if you can get some support from people, that's great. Um, again, like this makes sense. If somebody tells you I'm an alcoholic, you don't invite that person to the bar. You don't, I mean, unless you're just really not helpful, but you know what I mean? Um, you don't buy them a bottle of wine for Christmas. You don't expect them to serve that in their home when the, when you're there with them. It, for some reason, when it comes to that, because we look at that obviously as a, a disease that's very serious, um, we take it more serious and support people more on that. But if we could support each other and ask for that kind of support with other goals, I think it would be so great. Um, I want to work out more. How can I create an environment for that. I've said it so many times, I created a business around it, have a way to do it wh where the barrier to entry is extremely low. So number one, the environment, have some stuff at your house that you can do and have some workouts in a notebook or something somewhere or saved in your Instagram, saved archived posts that are things that you can do on the fly with no equipment, with very little warm up inside your home, with a pair of dumbbells, whatever, so that you don't have this decision of, am I gonna drive to the gym today? What time am I gonna go to the gym today? What am I gonna wear to go to the gym today? You know, should I invite someone to come with me? It's just, I'm going to, during this like stage one of no matter what, I'm gonna do some activity every single day. 
set a specific time if possible for you and say, I'm going to do something at 6 p.m. every day, even if that's 30 burpees. I did something and we're in that stage of just creating habits and breaking bad habits. That's something that we've talked about on the podcast so much. So we have that complete avoidance or super structured kind of stage where we're really breaking the cycle and trying to like create something completely new that's typically we associate with having a lot of willpower and just simplifying it, making the barrier to entry um, either easier, like working out at home or much more difficult by if I really want to eat something bad, I'm going to actually have to leave my house and go get it is the choices are going to be a lot easier to make. I do believe, and and James Clear talks about this in the book as well, that giving yourself rewards for following through, while that can be great, like if I work out 30 days in a row, I'm going to buy myself a new dress or something like that. Um, Those can be helpful, but it has been found that that's not nearly as motivating as creating a consequence. So if I don't work out for 30 days, I told Salvi, I'm going to give him a hundred bucks. Actually, I gave Salvi a hundred dollar bill and told him that he gets to keep it if I don't work out for a hundred days straight. That he talks about in the book a lot is much more motivating than the reward. Cause you're like, oh, whatever. I don't really need a new dress. And what I give to Salvi or with the consequence that I create needs to mean enough to me that I really don't want to lose it. Like, So for some people, that's 20 bucks. For other people, it's 500 bucks, whatever. It doesn't have to be money. It can be if I don't follow through on this simple task that I've said I'm going to do, if I don't follow through on finishing um, six weeks of the street parking nutrition templates, or if I don't follow through with no sugar for 30 days, I am not allowed to think of something that you love. I'm not allowed to go to a movie for two months and you tell the person that you normally go to the movie with to hold you to that. And somebody that you know believes um, or that you trust and wants you to go to the movies with them, so they're going to encourage you or whatever. Um, So creating consequences is a lot of times or pretty much always, according to studies and things like that, more motivating than rewards. And that's just something to think about. Make it easy on yourself. Don't bring those things into your home that you're not trying to have. Tell the people, um, if you need to for a period of time, not go out to eat at a restaurant because you don't think that you're ready to order the proper things off the menu and you don't have anybody there that's going to support you. Take a short period of time just to detox away from it and to go away from it. Or maybe try going to a restaurant by yourself where there's not the social pressure of if I, people are used to me ordering a burger and now I'm ordering chicken and rice with veggies on the side. And I know everybody's going to be like, oh, what's up with your order? Because we do all have <laughs> friends like that. Um, practice doing it by yourself a few times or make sure you're in a supportive environment um, and just own it as well. So I do think that there's a stage where there has to be some rigidity if you truly want to change habits. Let's say you get through your two, your two months or your three months of I'm going to work out four times a week for three months and I made it through, and I didn't suffer the consequence of paying Salvi $100, and now I've kind of gotten used to it, Um, or I haven't had sugar at all for 30 days or 60 days or whatever. You guys know I am not the person to say that you should live like that forever. I mean, of course, I want you to work out four days a week forever, but there might be a week on vacation where you can lose that rigidity a little bit. I don't expect you not to eat sugar forever. Uh, The holidays are coming up. I will have some pumpkin pie. I will, you know, have some of the cinnamon rolls that I make on Christmas. I will let Knox have the cinnamon rolls that I make on Christmas. So I think where it can become maybe not more difficult, but just not realistic or enjoyable is to live in that rigidity phase. So at some point you want to have moderation, right? I want to be able to watch TV sometimes. (laughs) Um, Sometimes I want to stay up till 1am with my friends, you know, having like a great talk or on a trip or, you know, like maybe me and Julian get super into like a Harry Potter marathon. Like who knows, you know, like I don't need to be so rigid forever that it's like making my life not enjoyable or spontaneous ever. Um, 
So you kind of go after you have that, okay, I feel like I've established this habit. I do it kind of like almost without thinking about it now. It's just part of my day. It's part of my schedule. I don't buy the things at the grocery store. I work out at 4 p.m. I go to bed at the right time. um, And I've really stuck to that. Then it's like, okay, moderation. Now I'm in the phase where if something comes up and I want to have a treat, I'll have it. If something comes up, and it disrupts my ability to work out or I decide that I want to go to a movie with my kids instead of my normal workout time today or whatever, no problem. I'm allowed to skip every once in a while. That moderation phase is really where we should live once the established habits have already happened and once our environment has created that those are going to be able to be easier to maintain. Um, But Then there's always going to be you have to pay attention to those things. Because whatever it is that you were struggling with before, it's not just going to go away um, forever. Like if you love cereal, even if you don't have it for three years, when you eat it again, it's probably still going to taste delicious. So if you're like, oh, I'll have cereal once a week. And then all of a sudden it's twice a week. And then all of a sudden it's three times. You might have to go back to that no cereal ever for a couple months. Um If you, sleep time is my biggest one. So I will be like, I'm going to go to bed at 930 and I'll do it for like a week. And then it's like, okay, as long as I'm in bed by 930 and then I'll be in bed, but like on my computer. And then it's like, okay, well, as long as I'm in bed by 10 and and it just, it's that to me is a very slippery slope that if I don't stick to it and really reevaluate over and over, I can find myself awake at midnight again. So It might not be the fitness for me or the eating, but that's the thing that I struggle with. So you have to have hard and fast rules of, okay, when have I taken it too far or when have I allowed too much moderation for too long? So you eat completely whatever you want on vacation. That's got to end when you come home. So, and and maybe you need to even go back to the super strict avoidance period for two weeks or three weeks when you come home. Um, I hope that kind of like helps you guys. I really encourage you um, to read the book, Atomic Habits. It talks so much, so many of the ideas that I get for posts or things that we talk about on the podcast and everything are just things that I've gotten from that book. Um, Again, it's written by James Clear and it just really helps you to understand that you're not a weak-minded person. You're not not disciplined. You're not whatever it is that you blame that you're different than everyone else there's a solid chance that you're just going about achieving these goals in the wrong way um, and not setting yourself up for success because you're putting too many things in your way that are going to be temptations too often. So reconstructing your environment, trying to find people around you for support, setting up some consequences and allowing for some super strict periods before you start to go into the moderation, paying attention to that, Um, And making sure moderation doesn't turn back into like the slippery slope back to where you were before. And um, it the last thing that I will say is that this shouldn't be a complete lifestyle overhaul in one day either. I'm not going to choose all of these goals and go into the complete avoidance phase or the super strict phase with all of them at once. You choose one at a time. And you guys know that I always encourage super simple. So even if that super strict phase is I'm just going to drink enough water every day for a month, or I'm just going to move every day for a month, or I'm just going to eat vegetables at every meal for a month. And once I have that, then I'll add the next thing. And then I'll add the next thing. Um, That's also the best way for long-term success and for habits that will actually stick as opposed to trying to overhaul your life all at once in six weeks. It's New Year's. Don't do that. Choose one thing and choose it now and start now. Whatever's realistic for you to maintain through the holiday season, And then you'll feel successful going into the new year with that. And you can choose the next thing and start down that path. Um, I hope that helps you guys. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you next time.